Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's September 22nd. This will be our chart lesson for today. And as expected, we did rally. This is a look at our daily chart with the uh, envelope uh, bands on it. And you can see we did make a higher low and kind of rally out of there and actually traded higher than we did yesterday. But we closed inside that and we're still inside this larger bar. So this is looking like a little congested area. So it may we may work sideways here a little bit. But we were extremely oversold and you can tell we alleviated some of that today with the rally here. So now we're back up into the green, the upper part of the lower Basically what you have is your midline here and then you have your lower bands and your higher bands and we're in the upper portion of the lower bands now which uh, greatly alleviates some of that oversold. So this was a fairly strong rally. It was an FOMC day so it kind of it made it, it, it basically eliminates part of your trading day on those days because you want to be flat about an hour going into that trade. You don't want to take any new trades about an hour going into an FOMC announcement. If you're already in a trade and you're managing it, that's one thing. Uh, but don't uh, don't take any new trades. And I would definitely be flat 15 or 20 minutes prior because a lot of times when you go into those FMO, FOMC announcements, you'll just start getting into congestion that's like this and, and you can't get out of it before the announcement because nobody's buying or selling. The market just kind of goes flat. Didn't do that today. Let's actually pull up the 2000 tick. And here's our 2000 tick chart. The blue square is 12 o'clock into one. And generally I'll drag that over to about where things get back to normal, which right in here is about where it got back to normal. And so you lost this whole blue area of trading here. So you can just ignore that. Uh, and that starts about noon and goes to, uh, again, this could vary from data from, news item to news item based on when the market kind of gets back to normal. But one thing I'll share with you is notice that no matter what, we're in this down channel, uh, you get an overshoot and then we reverse, then you're in this up channel, you get a close outside a new high, then you're in this down channel. And it actually, I drew it like this, but it actually looks like it's probably more like that and it looks like we had an overshoot down here we still try to make a new low and couldn't uh, and bounced and really from about after the first 30 minutes after the regular session opening this is a range day we just went sideways prices tried to sell off and couldn't the buying came back in drove it up and we kind of closed just shy of the middle of this trading range area which is the tan area so this chart's a little busy when we uh, split it when we uh, zoom in and and uh, open it up a little bit. It won't look quite as busy as it is now, but just make sure you always pay attention to these FOMC days at 1 o'clock. Be out of these. Be flat at noon. And these are Central Standard Times. The announcement comes out at 1 o'clock my time, Central Standard Time. So be flat by noon, Central Standard Time. And uh, again, just let mar the market kind of get back to normal before you start taking trades again. And that was pretty much right here on this. But again, you can see the price action still played out even, even with the news. So the one o'clock announcement actually came right here. And if you'd have been short right in there, you might've got stopped out before it went high, actually before it went lower. Actually, the big move down was with the trend. So if you'd have been in a trade there, you should have been short and you would have got a nice move out of that. So like I said, even in the news item, the price action generally works, but all that happened in a few bars. And we actually had something similar that happened right up here. We had maybe four or five bars print in about a 20 second span. And somebody, what trader asked me about it, and what I believe is if you notice, there's the high from yesterday, and that happened when we broke just above that. So my guess is all this sell-off from in here, a lot of traders, this was their line in the sand. Probably 
my guess is maybe some big institutional trader maybe had a line in the sand here and had a lot of buy orders. Uh, they're probably safety stops, or they might have decided, hey, if we break higher here, we want to go long with it. So it's one of the two, uh, and that's what happened to cause that so fast. When this broke broke higher above that, it, the market went nuts for a few minutes. And that's probably why you can't really see it here, but if you back out, you can see how it rocketed up real quick and then sold off just as quickly. So um, my guess is we triggered a bunch of buy stops up here. And uh, once they ran out, it quickly reversed back down and then kind of reset right in here before it eventually worked lower before going higher again. So I'm guessing that's what happened there. So it, it's going to be one of the two. Either there was a big sell order sitting up here. Um, well, it, shot, it actually shot up first. So either there was a big buy order sitting up here or there were buy stops up here from everybody that got short here in this big sell-off that probably decided, hey, if we go higher than this two than this two-legged correction here, then I probably want to get out of this trade. And that's what happened. So they have their buy stops up there. There's buy safety stops. And then when it runs up there, it hits them. And when they run out, then it's kind of like an exhaustion move. And that's why this is what happens to people. They buy up here. Uh, they see this rocket up and they start buying. And within a few minutes after buying, it's moving down. And they're stuck in here. And they just simply bought at the very high. That's why we don't buy like that. Uh, same thing kind of happened here. You had another exhaustion move and the buying, 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 buying. And all of a sudden the buying runs out and boom. And you have that quick sell off and then people get their wits back about them and the buying comes back in and eventually it starts going higher again. It did the same thing here, just on a bigger, bigger, um, little bigger version of the same thing that happened over here. I mean, they almost look very similar. You, you, you got that big move up and then you get to close a little, a little correction and then that exhaustion move and then boom, when all the buying runs out and it climbs back up and just kind of works sideways before it finally takes off again. And you can see that here. We worked up, had that big exhaustion, kind of worked sideways to down, then finally worked back up and then it sold off just like it, like it did here. So, um, You see that over and over, but there it is. It, you buy, you, that little buying spurt comes in when it hits all the stops, and then the exhaustion works sideways a little bit and sells off. And it did the same thing here. Only thing difference here was it, it continued higher a little sooner. We Here you get a little bit of a sideways and then a sell-off. Here you get a little bit of sideways and we went higher. But that's because this blue channel is still in play. And here this channel actually... Uh, plays out here and it plays out here too so uh, but anyway um, you can see that most of the day we had a little bit of rally right after eight, the 8 30 opening and uh, then we just kind of went sideways and we were looking for two legs up here we didn't quite get there we came really really close you can see we missed it by a few ticks but um, you measure that first leg and then the second leg started here uh, also, you would have measured the range, and you can see that right there. We found resistance on the range right there uh, before it pushed higher. We actually went into a real tight congestion area right there. But let's back out, go through the trades, and wrap this day up. I'm going to try to keep this. We've been almost 30 minutes the last few days, so I'm going to try to uh, keep this one a little shorter. 7 o'clock came. Right in here on this first trade, I believe this first trade was right at 7 o'clock. Uh, yeah, 7.07, so I think 7 came right in here. Must have been on this bar. So, yeah, we, we're right, we came into 7 o'clock right on these, right as we're coming in this bar. So this is right at the open, but... Notice that you got a new high and you get a first entry and then a second entry. That's a little bit congested. Um, 
signal bar looks okay, but there's three bars there. It looks a little congested, but notice how everything's holding on that EMA. Um, you could look at this. This is technically slightly lower there, so there's a new low. So there's a first entry, second entry. So there was a failure there, but that's before seven. And this is like a higher low after the failure, but it's a second entry long too. So I like this trade. Uh, it's a little aggressive, but notice you got your first channel over here. Um, let me color this one just so it's a little easier to discuss. I'll make it kind of grayish. But that's the first break, and we don't quite have a new high yet. So... We don't get a new high until here, and then we only make it by a tick or so, and then it sells off. So you were, you still would expect prices to maybe try to go higher there, uh, which they do. So I like, uh, you know, there's reasons to like that trade. It's a little bit aggressive just because it looks a little congested. That's three bars there, and uh, but there it is a higher low after a failed second entry short, and it is a second entry long. So there's positives there's pros and cons on that trade i marked it green of course we run up and make the new high and then we start this downtrend uh, there's another first entry second entry here right at the midline of what looks like the sideways stuff and right um right at the uh, again at the midline and then Notice that there's a, a double bottom right there. So it's right at that. It basically makes a little double bottom there. But it's engulfing bars. It breaks lower and turns up and goes out the other side. But it probably traps some people on that because a lot of people are trying to pick these tops and stuff. So you may take that trade. But when it quickly fails, now you got a failed second entry long after pushing through. So the better trade is to go short there. But this could have went higher. And if you took that long, I wouldn't fault you. It's a little bit aggressive. Uh, but the trend has been up. We already do have a new high in place. So you probably want to wait for something better than that to go long. And this is why, because it quickly turns down. It would have worked. And there's reasons to maybe consider that. Because this basically looks like a little du a higher double bottom than these last two swings. So there's a chance we could make another leg up. But I think you're better off to wait and... I really think you're better off to almost anticipate a possible failure here with a short. And that came right here. Uh, unfortunately, there, there's a second entry short here. Notice the low, first entry, second entry. And it's a big bearish bar, but that looks like a trap to me. It would have worked again, but you got to close outside. And by the time you enter, you're almost to a new low uh, on this yellow channel. So, you know, it's hard to justify, especially with that congestion. And we continue to work lower, but I just don't see any setups I like there. And it finally bounces. And you try to go short once, twice, it fails. That's a failure. I like going long there if it breaks higher. And then it makes a higher low, which is probably the even better place to enter because this does look a little congestive. But you could argue there's a failed break lower. And it's also a new high, so first entry, second entry. Uh, it wouldn't qualify for a second entry by itself because the signal bar is not good. Let me make this a little bigger. I'm sorry, you probably can't even see that. Um, that wouldn't qualify for a second entry long, but it does qualify for an entry as a failure. So when you combine them both, um, with, with prices having just come off the key entry point with no entry there, uh, this is where you'd probably want to enter. And if you didn't enter here, definitely enter here. And you can see that it was off to the races by that point. And you're too far away from the EMA to be, and too close to the highs here to be entering anything. Um, and then, of course, it just runs up and you get a first entry. You get your break and a first entry. And so no entry there really either. And then that's that little pattern with that little exhaustion. And then it drops down again. There's a second entry long there, but I don't think the signal bar is good enough. It would have been a nice entry, but if you just wait a few minutes later, you get a first entry, second entry again. So you get that repeat pattern. I like going long there. And then there's the higher low, which is probably the better entry.
because you do have some resistance right here, but there's probably going to be a lot of sell stops just above this. So if it does break higher, it's probably going to take off real quick, which it does. It then comes back and tests it. I did not mark this one, but technically there's a new low there. So that's first entry, second entry. Uh, the only problem it's an engulfing bar, and I don't trust those, especially this close to a high. But it's another one. You could argue for it. We'll mark it green. And you come back and you bounce here, basically make a double bottom. And that's a really bullish bar, but it's it's mostly an inside bar. Um, it's a first entry, so I don't think you need to wait. Then you get a second entry here, too congestive. And, and by that time, you it's pretty obvious we're going sideways. You don't want to be going short yet because this blue channel is still in play. And then finally, we come down here and we drop down. And we make a little double bottom there with a lower high, and it's a triple test. It's also a new high, first entry, second entry. So I like that entry. And when it comes back and tests it again and gives you another bullish bar, reversal type bar, uh, you're just trading the range. But hopefully one of these is going to break higher. And this time it does. It didn't here, but this time it takes off. So I, you could enter both of those. I like them both. And of course, this is a new low because it's a double bottom. So then you get a first entry, second entry, uh, trying to come back and test this again. And it's right at that key entry point again. We do have a new high in place, but on a uh, on this move, on a trend this big and this long with the measured move up here, we're probably going to push on to a higher low. And so you may, I like that one just on the failure and the second entry. And it's a repeat pattern similar to this one right here. And it makes that higher low again here too, but it's not a good enough signal bar and it's still too congestive. It takes off though. And by that time, draw this, you might be looking for a, a flatter, another channel up here. And of course this yellow one looks, turns out to look like it's valid. Uh, you don't get any more entries up here until finally you get that little exhaustion with the second entry long right there. That's that bearish of a sell off is probably going to uh, trap some shorts if it if you have enough room back to the EMA. This one's real close to being green, but it's because uh, this really looks like one leg down to me. So uh, you probably could argue for that to be green, but. I felt it was it's one of those it's probably worth the risk. Plus, notice this was the measured move here on the range. That's what this blue line is, and prices push through it, and they come back to test it. So that was a quick move back to test it, and then we bounce. So you would look for a possible bounce there anyway. Um, then we're just kind of working sideways and we turn down draw your trend line just in case we start another trend down which we do and then you're working up first entry and second entry i mark this one green it's a second entry short we're definitely in a downtrend here but it's not quite back to the trend line uh, we do get a close outside here and a new high all in one bar which is probably close enough I think it's a little risky, but you may want to take that trade because we've been trending down here. There's, uh, but a lot of times you can get trapped on that. So you got to be real careful with that trade. So I marked it green, but we, we came up short here too. So that would mean we could overshoot it by that much or we could undershoot it by that much because the market tends to move in measured moves. And so notice the amount we're short. That's about the exact amount we came up short on this side. So, you know, if you understand all that and could factor that in, you may take that trade. It's aggressive, though. And then prices drop on down. And they're just kind of, we get a close out. This is when the news, oh, this is when the news came. So I guess we shouldn't even be taking a trade. I marked that, but uh, I wasn't paying attention. We're inside the blue here. So you don't want to take anything in here. My bad here. Um, mark that trade before I drew the blue box, I guess. Uh, but all that I talked about still valid. This was, I mean, this is, on any other day, you might take that trade based on what I just explained. But of course, this is all crazy in here because of the, it's where the news came out right in here at one o'clock. And you want to be flat in here. And it, it kind of got back to normal right in here. And 
notice you got a new swing high here it's higher than that one and so you get a first entry and then you get a second entry right there that fails normally you'd want this to be on the other side of the trend uh, or i'm sorry the ema but we'd already pushed through it once and this is probably going to act like a long trap and you can see how quickly that sells off you make a new low and then you get a first entry second entry i like going short there again another nice move down then you're moving up first entry and then a second entry and this looks a little like this other one over here it's kind of like a repeat pattern um, right off the key entry point you could call that a higher low as well but it's a second entry short too and then a failed second entry long here and let me clarify this it wouldn't be a failure until it breaks lower so that's below this bar but this is the bar makes the highest point in the swing so your safety stop has to go above that bar I usually put the the arrow over the entry bar, which will be here. This will be the only time you'll see a bar that doesn't make the highs of the entry bar when it either has matching highs or it's a failure. Uh, a failure with an inside bar like that's probably okay, but uh, any other time we don't really trade inside bars. And that turns out to be a really nice trade. You get a runner on that. And then we overshoot down here and we get a failed break out of the channel. Um, not the channel, the uh, range. Prices bounce. I don't think you want to go long here yet, but once it gets outside, and a lot of times the way you know if you got your trend line, you get those little gaps. Notice how prices close on the high, open on the low, and keep going, and they don't overlap at all. Usually that's because there's a trend line or something coming through there, and you can see that trend line coming, and so that's a that shows you that trend line's right right there. And that helps you know that it's probably an overshoot down here. And so anyway, you'll see that I, I haven't noticed that as much lately, but used to, I'd see that all the time. Maybe I just hadn't been paying attention to it. But anyway, you try to go higher once, twice. And when it breaks lower right there, it actually tries to go higher three times, but it's a failed second entry when it breaks lower, which is right below that bar. And so I like going short there again. I really, you got to be aware of this support here. So you want to have enough room, but you got plenty there. And you see why, because it bounces and it never really went much lower than that and went higher. So if you don't have enough room, you get stopped out on this trade. So, and after that, I don't see anything else I like. There's another second entry short here, but this is, you know, we're back above the EMA and there's a good chance you could get trapped to the long side. So um, you really want to get it, see it bounce down here again before you get long. And this one's green. This bar is way too big here. So the, the only way it actually breaks lower and turns up so you might have went long on an engulfing bar but they're you know they're not very reliable and so it's a little bit risky and we do have a close outside no new low yet although i think we have an overshoot here too so does it really matter i don't know um, but it takes off to the upside and i don't see any other chance to enter it there uh, then we you get to close outside of that little that micro channel and two swings to a new high. And then we're headed lower. This is actually a repeat pattern on this long here from the last move off the high highs that ran up like that. Right here. So this is almost like a repeat pattern. So if you took that on a repeat pattern, that would be okay. Notice the move the big push up and then the exhaustion and you get the second entry long from way down here the bar even looks similar so i'm gonna mark it green but if you took that if you notice the repeat pattern generally when one of those patterns and then this sell-off is that repeat pattern that i was going over in the blue that shouldn't have marked uh right here so again if you took that as a repeat pattern i'm okay with it but you get a lower high here, and you might have entered that lower high. Um, it's a little bit far from that high to consider that a lower high, but you can, it clearly looks like one leg down. So that's another one. That's another possibility. But if you wait just a minute, you get the failed second entry long, and then you get a, a little better. Uh, you know, you get you have a better reason to enter now. Still took it a minute to take off, but it turns out to be a good trade. And then you run back up. And you try to go higher once, twice. So there's a failure. And you expect prices to make a new low. 
they run down, make a new low, and then it reverses out of there. That takes you into 3 o'clock, too. And notice lately after 3 o'clock, you just don't get much movement. So uh, I think, you you know, you definitely don't want to be taking any trades much after about, I mean, really after, you know, we had some pretty good movement right up till 3 o'clock, I would say. So just make sure you're not entering after 3 o'clock. And I would be real careful entering into 3 o'clock because even this last 10 or 15 minutes, if you'd have entered here, you might have got, you, you might have got stuck in a trade. So just be careful with it. So anyway, that's what I saw today. And we're at 25 minutes. And I said I was going to keep it a little shorter today. So I'm going to wrap this up. Um, we'll be back again to do, tomorrow. Believe it or not, tomorrow's Thursday when we'll wrap up our week. So um, anyway, that's going to do it for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.